All right, with <clears throat> with this uh, forecast video update on this Friday, May 14th, this is the evening edition. I am Josh Brown. I uh, hope that you all had a wonderful day. I have to say it's been really uh, not too bad uh, to spend a day outside if you had a chance to do so. Conditions have been pretty uh, been pretty breezy, but at least it was not as extremely hot that like just like what we've seen earlier this week. And we're going to see the breezy conditions uh, to continue as we head towards uh, the weekend. And we're going to see the heat and humidity build up, build back up as we head towards uh, next week. And I'll have more details here in just a little bit. But uh, first things first, let's go ahead and take a look. With, take a look what's happening right now on the current uh, Bear Threat Net radar on this Friday evening. And the only thing I'm seeing here is if you go farther towards the east in eastern Orange County and also in Chippewa County, there are just a couple of isolated coastal showers uh, around these areas. And they're spotty, by the way, so they should not last much longer since they're moving pretty quick. But we'll put this in motion here so you all know where, the, where these are heading to. And it looks like it's moving uh, from north-northeast due, due, due to the south and southwest. So that's where these uh, coastal showers are heading to right now. So it looks like if you're in Titusville, uh, it seems like you may, get, you may get a little brief shower to head into your direction here in the next uh, several minutes. And even the same thing if you live just to the west of Rockledge. And also over in the northeastern side of Osceola County. So that's the only thing we're seeing here this evening. It's just a couple of showers, again, in, in parts of Orange and, Orange and Brevard counties. But the rest of central Florida, for the most part, looks to be pretty quiet. And uh, we're going to see things uh, stay quiet here for most of the uh, state as we head towards the, not, uh, at least for the rest of tonight, into the overnight hours. But if you notice these blue shaded colors here along the coastal areas of Volusia and Brevard counties, uh, that is actually what we call it a rip current uh, statement or high surf advisory because these uh, rip currents are going to be uh, around as we head towards the weekend. So it may not be a pretty good day here, or a pretty good weekend, at least if you're heading to the beach uh, because of those rip currents. I know if you're heading to the water along the beaches, that may not be uh, the best thing to do. So you may want to try to avoid uh, doing some boating activities or anything around the Atlantic waters because of the breezy and rip current uh, again situation but it should be a pretty good pretty good weekend to lay in the sun by the way so if you plan on doing that if you're in Daytona in Titusville or Melbourne or perhaps Cocoa Beach you could do that but I rather just or I recommend just avoid you know going in the water due to these uh, high surfing and rip currents but uh, anyways let's go ahead and take a look what's happening as far as temperatures go across central Florida, let's go back to earlier this afternoon. And uh, as we go ahead and pinpoint temperatures location by location. So, for example, here in Orlando, look at the high temperature. We actually did hit a high temp at about 83 degrees today, so it's been not too bad. Again, it was a little warm, but at least it was not as humid like we've seen earlier this week. And then farther south you go into Kissimmee, it looks like temperatures did hit low 80s this afternoon as well. Farther east you go towards Titusville, temperatures were a little cooler because of those breezy conditions with, uh, with mostly in the upper 70s. Uh, farther south you go down towards Lakeland, uh, looks like it's been a little bit warm for you. Uh, it, it, it did show around about 4 o'clock in the afternoon that temperatures did reach about 86 in the Lakeland area. Farther north and west you go towards the villages and even towards Ocala. Uh, temperatures did also hit low 80s this afternoon. And then if you go farther to the north, like Sanford, uh, let's see here, uh, Daytona Beach and Palm Coast, temperatures again stayed in the 70s to about 80. All right, let's get a uh, shout out this evening for Mike Pierce. Uh, he's in the house. Good to have you. Hope you are doing well. And I hope you're, that you're, uh, you're flying safely. Hope you get to your destination uh, safely this evening, too. And as always, thank you for stopping by and saying hi, saying hello. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at those current temperatures right now uh, at this 8 o'clock hour. And as you can see, we are still looking pretty comfy out there. We got mostly 70s all across the viewing area. So we got 75, right, 75 degrees right now currently uh, here in Orlando. Uh, let's see, we got uh, 78 right now in Kissimmee. 79 right now is the current temperature in Lakeland. We got 75 in Titusville. We got 76 in Sanford, 72 in Daytona Beach. So pretty cool up there for the northeastern half of central Florida. 71 is the current temperature right now in Palm Coast. And we got mid-70s farther west you go towards Ocala and the villages. 
All right, we got uh, Gail. Uh, ha- I don't know. If, I don't know if I can pronounce your last name correct there, but uh, is it uh, Havander? I don't know. But uh, I see that you just popped in in the house, uh, checking in from Ocala. As always, Gail, good to have you. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at feature cast and show you what we're expecting as far as our temps go for this weekend. Since it's going to still be looking a bit cooler for the next uh, couple of days before the heat and humidity builds back in next week. And before we do that, as always, like I've been saying here every night, if you're just uh, popping on into Facebook Live, uh, I do not mind if you could uh, go ahead and share this feed uh, to your followers, because you know my motto, sharing is caring. And before we also move on, I'm going to go ahead and share this feed to one of my other live Facebook pages. So, as usual, hang on just a minute, and we will, uh, again, move on. All right, so here we go. So if, you, so if you're going to be out for the rest of tonight, looks like we'll see temperatures look pretty uh, comfy and cool. And as you wake up tomorrow morning to get more, tomorrow morning to kick off the weekend, we'll see temperatures uh, uh, start off in the upper 50s, especially if you live in Ocala. Others, including Orlando, will see mostly low to mid 60s to begin Saturday. So it could be another perfect morning to maybe just get outside and just. Uh, Take maybe a nice walk or a run, or perhaps take the dogs out for a morning walk, because uh, it'll be another perfect start, like we like we have seen earlier this morning. So if, you, if you're going to be planning on doing that, I hope you do enjoy another uh, cool start to the day tomorrow morning. And then as we head into the afternoon, again, most of us will be mostly dry and sunny, but I can't rule out maybe a few isolated coastal showers along the coastal communities of I-95. But it's not going to last all day, so don't worry. But by tomorrow afternoon, we'll see temperatures uh, warm up into the mid to upper 70s and even some in the lower 80s. So looking to be another perfect afternoon as we head into tomorrow. So it looks like the only area that could see temperatures in the low 80s tomorrow will be in Lakeland. Others will be mostly below 80. And then if you got any plans in the evening, we'll see temperatures uh, looking pretty uh, comfy. Uh, especially, especially around sunset at 8 o'clock tomorrow night with mostly upper 60s, in, basically for the Palm Coast area and others in the lower 70s. So looking great there. And then heading into uh, late tomorrow night into early Saturday, or Saturday, <laughs> Sunday morning, I'm sorry. Another cool start. So it looks like the villages, Ocala, maybe Wildwood, and over around the Paisley areas, so it looks like you can see temperatures begin in the upper 50s early Sunday, so look into another good start there, with others, including Orlando, started off with low to mid 60s. And then as we head towards the afternoon yet again, we will see temperatures uh, temperatures warm up just a little bit, but still looking to be perfect uh, for outdoor plans. We're talking about uh, highs in the mid to upper 70s, and some again into the lower 80s. So if you got some uh, big plans out outside on Sunday, hope you do enjoy. And again, if you head into the beach this weekend, especially if you're along I-95 near Titusville, Daytona Beach, and Palm Coast, again, should be a perfect day to uh, get your sun tannings, tannings in. But if you're going to be doing some boating activities in the water, again, I recommend to uh, I recommend that you avoid that because of those breezy conditions that will continue uh, as we head towards both Saturday and Sunday. So, uh, so yeah. But, uh, but as we continue on through Sunday evening, we'll see temperatures again cool off around sunset with upper 60s to lower 70s. And then as the clock ends, at least towards early Monday morning, it looks like temperatures may start off a little bit warmer. So 
So it may not be as cool like we're like we've seen this morning or for the next few mornings this weekend. So instead of seeing 50s for most of us, I think we'll be I think we'll be getting back into the 60s to begin early Monday uh, to also and also to start off another new work week. So there you all have it there. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the radar again. So just one more check before we get right to the GFS, because if you're just coming into Facebook Live, Facebook Live, excuse me, and if you missed it, well, here it is again. And like I said, the only thing we're seeing here is just a couple of isolated coastal showers near the coast of Brevard County, especially uh, right towards the coast of Cape Canaveral. And there's one right here that is uh, about to move towards Rockledge and Melbourne, at least the western part of the city limits. But other than that, the rest of the viewing area looks quiet. All right, so here is the GFS. So let's begin with Monday, early next week, as we're about to uh, conclude mid-May and about to enter late May. So here's Monday, and it looks like the weather will be looking pretty quiet. So it'll so be a dry start to the work week next week with lots of sunshine, so no rain or no storms to deal with. And uh, temperature-wise for highs down below. Uh, looks to heat up uh, pretty quickly, so it looks like some of that heat and humid humidity may start to pick up again as we head towards Monday, with mostly in the mid to upper 80s. Some could even hit 90 on Monday, especially if you live along I-4 in west, but if you go farther towards the east, especially in places like uh, Daytona Beach, New Smyrna, uh, Melbourne and Palm Coast, temperatures will be a little cooler, but still warming up a bit with upper 70s and low 80s. And if you go farther north, like Alabama points off towards the east, temperatures will also warm up into the upper 70s and low 80s. And a little cooler farther west, you go towards the Mississippi uh, state with, with some upper 60s and 70s due to the uh, chances for showers and storms possible. Now, what about uh, Tuesday of next week? That is uh, May 18th, and it looks like there could be a few isolated coastal showers again. Again, again, if you live in places like uh, Melbourne, Daytona Beach, and Palm Coast, we'll call for about a 20% uh, slim coverage of a few isolated coastal showers and spotty communities. But the rest of the viewing area, including Orlando, looks to stay pretty quiet. So another uh, dry day as we head towards Tuesday. And our high temperatures uh, down below that will continue to heat things up. So most of us, most of us will, be, will be back into the lower 90s as we head towards Tuesday. Again, if you live right along in west of I-4. With others, especially along I-95, with temperatures mostly staying in the mid to upper 80s, but again, still warm. So that's why that the heat and humidity is going to start picking up again here by next week. So be sure to uh, be, be ready for that. And farther north to go, temperatures will also stay warm in the mid 80s, including places like Birmingham to Jackson, Atlanta, all the way towards Charleston. And as we get into the middle of next week, that is for Wednesday, May 19th, and it seems like the rain chances may start to pick up a little bit if we live right along the coast of 95. So we're going to call for about a 40% coverage of a few pop-up showers and storms near the coast of Brevard County, Volusia, and Flagler County. So there could be some, in, in, some inland, but especially in parts of Orange County, so it could be a couple of pop-up showers and storms on that day. But the rest of Central Florida, especially if we go west of Orlando, looks to stay pretty dry. Now, for, well, for right now, according, according to the GFS, it looks like the heaviest rain is going to stay farther south near uh, the Florida Keys in Miami. So a pretty good chance of rain to, uh, to get close to the middle of next week, if that is the case. High temperatures uh, across the state are on the 19th uh, looks to stay pretty warm, with mostly in the 80s. But farther west you go, temperatures will stay mostly in the 90s, especially if you live near Ocala, all the way back down towards St. Petersburg and Marco Island. So yes, the 90s will stick around by midweek. And because of the rain that will also develop across parts of Alabama and Georgia, that's going to briefly cool down temperatures from the 80s down into the mid-70s. But across, uh, let's say, near Charleston, back into Birmingham, at least the western part of Birmingham and most of Mississippi, temperatures will stay mostly warm and a bit humid with mid to upper 80s possible. All right, here is a week from yesterday. That is next Thursday, May 20th, and it looks like the rain chances yet again increase, increases, especially 
if you live along I-95. Talking about it, we're talking about maybe just a 40% coverage of some showers and storms possible. If you live near Palm Coast, Daytona Beach, New Smyrna, Titusville, maybe some across parts of Orange and Osceola counties. So something to watch as we're about to uh, get close to inner wet season. The western part of the state looks to stay pretty dry. And still down around South Florida, like right around my, the Miami area, there could still be, you know, a pretty good chance to see some more showers and storms due to that tropical moisture that, that could be developing from the Gulf Coast. And that could also bring tropical moisture to Mississippi and Alabama that could fuel up some more tropical downpours and thunderstorms for the day on Thursday, May 20th. So we'll watch, the, we'll, we'll watch this carefully, but you know that could change. But uh, temperature-wise, for highs, looks to stay, again, warm. But once the rain does develop by next Thursday, that could help temperatures briefly cool down into the upper 70s and lower 80s, but where there'll be some lesser chances of rain, especially if you go towards the west of I-4, that's going to keep temperatures really hot and humid with mid to upper 80s and low 90s. And even the 80s will also be sticking around across most of Alabama to Georgia and even Charleston to uh, uh to approach the end of the work week next week. But right now, according to the GFS, as we approach a week from today, that is Friday, May 21st, it seems like almost every, everybody will see a good chance for some showers and storms due to that tropical moisture coming in from the Gulf Coast. So that could fuel maybe some heavier rain possible for most of, for most of the uh, viewing area by next Friday, if the GFS is correct. And according to the GFS, it looks like anywhere across parts of Osceola and Polk counties could see rain totals ranging between about an inch and a half to two and a half inches possible. So that is something we'll have to uh, keep a close eye on. But mostly, the, but still, the heaviest rain continues to stay south into South Florida and near the Keys, where there could be totals between one to three inches possible. So again, I'll keep you posted for any changes because that's something we'll keep an eye out. But because of the uh, tropical moisture and the heavy rain that will develop by next Friday, that's going to bring temperatures down into the uh, 70s if the GFS trend is correct. But it's it it still going to feel warmer, though, so just note that. But far the north you go, where there will be lesser chances of rain, that's going to keep the temperatures warm and pretty much still more in the way of summer with mid to upper 80s and low 90s. Again, that is for next Friday. All right, so here is next weekend, and next weekend could be a different story for Central Florida if you have outdoor plans because the rain chances stays high for most of the states. We're talking about another seventy uh, percent coverage of showers and perhaps some tropical downpours in and around the state. And for right now, it looks like anywhere from Orange County and West could see some pretty decent heavier totals, and that could range between about uh, one to three inches uh, possible if the GFS trend is right. And this is because. There could be some development a little early before hurricane season, which it doesn't start for the Atlantic until June 1st. Uh, but it could develop a little bit early for late May near the Gulf Coast, so that's something we'll have to watch. And that could bring, again, some of that uh, tropical moisture and some heavier rain and downpours here in the southeast. So we'll have to, uh, again, keep a close eye on, eye on that uh, trend. <clears throat> Otherwise, our temperatures looks to stay pretty warm with uh, 70s and 80s due to that heavier rain that will continue. But look at these temperatures farther north you go across Alabama, Georgia, and Mississippi. Because of that tropical moisture and because of the rain that will develop, that's going to bring temperatures pretty cool in the 60s and the 70s. So again, something to watch, but it's several days out, so you know that could bring changes as we get closer to, again, the end of next week into next weekend. And still, the rain continues for the day on Sunday, May 23rd, due to that uh, disturbance here that, that may develop near the Gulf Coast region. So that's, that's, that, could still, that could still fuel up some more heavier rain and some possible storms across most of the, again, central Florida viewing area. And it's not just for here in Florida, but, across, but of course, across Alabama and Mississippi, there could be some heavy rain from that uh, tropical disturbance, too. So again, I'll have to, get, so again, I'll, I'll have to keep you posted for any... Uh, changes here to the models as we get closer to next weekend uh, as far as the weather goes. And our high temperatures for next Sunday looks to be, again, still looking warm, but because of the heavier rain, that's going to keep temperatures in the 70s to near 80, 
not just for here in the Sunshine State, but also across most of the Mississippi Valley region, too. But if there's any good news whatsoever, as we approach Monday, May 24th, the rain chances will start to wind down just a bit. So it looks like by Monday, that little disturbance here down around near the Gulf Coast that could bring some heavier rain next weekend may start to uh, uh, weekend. And that could also and that could bring maybe Central Florida back into maybe what we call it some normal summer type thunderstorms as we're getting close to wet season. So we'll have to wait and see. And they'll be hit or miss if, if it's right, too. So, we'll, so we're going to call our coverage of rain at about a 50% coverage instead of seeing about a 70 to an 80% coverage like we'll see next weekend possible. And even for the same thing across Alabama and Georgia, there could be some normal type thunderstorms to return as we approach the, be the beginning of the following work week. So I'll keep you posted for any changes there. And it looks like that because of the uh, weakening of the tropical disturbance and decreasing the rain chances, that's going to bring temperatures Back to brutally hot conditions with upper 80s and low to mid 90s all across the state. And also even the same thing farther north you go into the Mississippi Valley region. Now, as we enter the land of voodoo country, this is taking you to Tuesday, May 25th. And it looks like it looks like the rain chances, as far as I know of, will start to push farther south into a southern uh, let's say, Orange to Osceola, Polk, and Brevard County, so there could be some showers and storms possible, but, but the good news is we may get a little bit of a break from the rain if the GFS is correct. So we'll have to wait and see what happens then, but you know it's two weeks off, so that could change. And it looks like the rain chances farther north to go towards the Mississippi Valley will start to uh, decrease even a bit to about a 40 to 50% coverage of normal summertime thunderstorms. So again, we'll wait and see, but you know that could change. But... Again, the heat and humidity will start to uh, pick up again as we, as most of us get back into the upper 80s into the low to mid 90s by the 25th of May. Not just for here in Florida, but also across most of, let's say, near Charleston, South Carolina, most to, mostly around southeast Georgia, into Alabama. So, yes, the heat will kick up as we head into the day on Tuesday, May 25th. And it looks like we'll be. It looks like, uh, as far as the weather goes for the day on the 26th of May, that's on a Wednesday. It seems like the weather will be looking pretty dry. So looking to see uh, little to no zero chances of rain, as far as I know of. So we'll see more breaks of the rain as that stays farther south into South Florida. But uh, if we go farther up north, the scattered storm chances could continue across Mississippi, Alabama, and points up to the north, as far north as Tennessee. So again, we'll have to watch that uh, closely. But otherwise, our temperatures will start to really start to, start to uh, get brutally hot uh, as we get back into the mid-90s for all of us here in the state, including Georgia and South Carolina. But notice with these scattered storms, notice, notice right here where my arrow is at. That could be another cold front that could try to drop to the southeast, but it may not make it to Florida because, you know, during wet season in the summer, uh, cold fronts don't come through central Florida until we get into fall. So just keep that in mind. But there, but there could be a frog coming through to the southeast, and that could bring maybe a cool down across Mississippi and Alabama with temperatures uh, dropping into the 70s and 80s. Again, we'll see, but you know, it's two weeks off, so that could always change. And here is two weeks from yesterday. That is for Thursday, May 27th, and it looks like the weather looks to stay pretty quiet. So not looking at, so we're not looking at a whole lot of rain for Central Florida. As we head towards the final full week of May, could be maybe a brief shower or two in some places, but other than that, we'll be mostly sunny and dry. And uh, our high temperatures down below that, again, looks to stay pretty warm and muggy with upper 80s and low to mid 90s. And looks like once the frog gets closer to the uh, Gulf Coast, that's going to bring temperatures really cooler in the 70s and 80s. So that'll be pretty nice to get a little bit of a relief from the heat for these folks up north. But again, for here in Florida, since that uh, the front may not approach us during the summer months, that's going to keep us brutally, brutally hot. Now, here is two weeks from today. That is for Friday, May 28th. And again, the weather looks to stay pretty quiet. Could be maybe a coastal shower or two along the coast of I-95. But other than that... It seems like we'll see things uh, turn out pretty okay. 
And uh, as far as our high temperatures go down below, once again, stays hot. So, so we're going to continue to see temperatures remain in the 90s across the state with uh, slightly cooler temperatures to continue across the Mississippi Valley region with more in the way of 70s and 80s. But too early to tell, so that could always change. And now to the and now to the Memorial Day holiday weekend. I bet most of you got some big plans for that uh, big weekend, and it looks like for the first half of it, that's Saturday, May 29th, and it seems like according to the GFS, there could be a little bit of rain down in South Florida, especially from West Palm Beach to Miami, but here in Central Florida, nothing to uh, see here. So not, not expecting a whole lot of rain for the first half of the holiday weekend, as far as I know of, along with the rest of the Southeast. So could be could be some perfect weather if the GFS is right, but you know it could change. But... The heat continues to build in with highs only in the mid ni- mid 90s across the state, with uh, mostly some cooler temperatures farther north you go into the 70s and low 80s. And then, last but not least, is Sunday, May 30th. That's the day before Memorial Day, and it looks like most of Central Florida once again looks to stay pretty quiet and dry. So not, so not looking at a whole lot of rain to deal with here in the state. But notice there's a system that could produce a good chance of some showers and storms across Alabama and Mississippi and north if it's right. Again, it's just too early to tell, but it could change. And temperatures for us looks to stay pretty pretty muggy with upper 80s and 90s. But notice there may be another cold front, and it shows this time temperatures getting down way much cooler with 50s and 60s. But I, I, I doubt if it's going to be happening across the northern part of the states, especially around Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia, because it's because it's kind of too late to see temperatures that cool like that. So, uh, you know, that could really change. So we'll see what happens once we get closer to the holiday weekend as far as the models go, uh, not just for here in Florida, but for the rest of the southeast. Okay, folks, I'm going to go ahead and start wrapping up this uh, Facebook Live feed on this Friday evening. And I'll be back again starting on Monday between 8 and 8.30. And I'll continue as usual, especially as we get through the weekend, by posting my notes or updates on my blog and social media pages 24-7. But in the meantime, hope you all enjoy your weekend. And remember, remember to stay safe by taking care of yourselves and each other. And God bless.